Okay, let's talk about some uh, resources. Uh, we've got a lot of questions on the table. Let's figure out where people can get some answers. Uh, we'll do some introductions here. From Central Baptist Church, Reverend Robert Scott. Thank you yes. for being here with us. We appreciate it. Alex Hallen, Salu Law student. You're also doing some outreach and some education in this very topic. Uh, Nick Samakovich, welcome back to the show. To you Happy and to Alex as well. Uh, Washu. Uh, MD, PhD candidate, still still candidate. plugging along. I have no degrees yet. <laughs> okay, well you're gonna. You, uh, do you get a badge? Because I want to know when I, you have. I think so. I think I probably have one of those. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, okay, so what what are you seeing? What the three of you? What are you seeing going on in the community? Is it working? What are the what are questions people have? How are you helping them answer these questions? Well, I think that first of all, particularly within the African American uh, context. Uh, the church really serves as a nexus of giving out information and helping people to understand some of the issues that they're facing. For me, this is a social justice issue as well as an economic issue. So in that particular vein, um, I felt somewhat compelled uh, to reach out to an organization and of course your organization came to the rescue with Jim Bursdale coming to share with my congregation. So I canceled a Bible study to have um, uh, the Missouri Health uh, initiative to come in and share with our congregation what's going on. So in that particular vein, um, um, the church, particularly the African American church, is playing a vital role. And that's happening not only in the city, but also in the county. Uh, Christ the King, pastor by Tracy Blackman, uh, Reverend Rodney Francis at Washington Tabernacle, uh, and some other churches are doing the same thing that I've done. Same question to you guys. What, do you, what are you seeing? that's actually helping and, and, and working. I think these are kind of inspiring stories. It's really mm -hmm. easy to get depressed now and say the insurance marketplace isn't working, the website's broken, everything's terrible, but you gotta remember this is a small component of healthcare reform. You know, getting insurance is, is a great step and something we need to be doing, but this is a part of a bigger issue of getting preventive care out to people, of making people aware about their health, about saying this is flu season, have you had a flu shot, can you see a doctor, can we treat your high blood pressure? I, I think these outreach efforts are working and it's great that people are asking questions about their health and, and really getting involved in the community. Yeah, we get a lot of questions, not even just about the Affordable Care Act, but one of the questions I get every time I go and almost, you know, overwhelmingly is, is this affecting my Medicare? And I want to say now that if you have Medicare, you're eligible. This does not affect you in any way. You should enroll for your Medicare just like you've always enrolled. And that seems to be a point of a lot of confusion. And so I'm glad that we get to dispel that tonight for everyone who's listening too. What, what other questions are you seeing? Because I, I hear what you're saying, Nick, but for tonight's conversation, we're talking about the, 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 the uh, importance of getting people signed up so this system works sure. as it was intended. How, what's, what's, uh, what are the barriers and how are you fixing that? How, how are, what are the questions you're having to answer and how are you doing it? Well, I think that within my congregation, um, some of the questions I've heard come up um, is what's the cost? That's very important. Um, when is this gonna kick in? How does this impact the current insurance I have, if I have insurance? So uh, those are some of the uh, off the cuff questions that come to mind. Uh, I think there's some deeper issues that we have to wrestle with. Uh, and unfortunately, this has become a political hot potato, mm -hmm. um, is dispelling a lot of the myths that are coming along with it. The interesting thing is that people fail to understand that what we, quote, use as a euphemism, Obamacare, is the Affordable Care Act. Sure. So they don't have a problem with the Affordable Care Act, but they have a problem calling it Obamacare because of the president. And that's rather unfortunate when basically it's one of the same. It's like saying, um, I don't want uh, a half a million dollars, but give me 500,000. <laughs> well, I think one of the other things that I know we've talked about on the show uh, prior to right now is the Medicaid expansion. And when we go out and we have to talk to people and tell them, I'm sorry, you can go into the marketplace, but you're not gonna get a subsidy, so you're not gonna be able to afford insurance. We wrestle with how to tell people that and where to send them and what to do, and there aren't tons of options for people, so part of what we're doing is working on some advocacy for the Medicaid expansion, and that's one of the exciting things, is telling people how they can get engaged with not only their health insurance, but with the political process, and people are really into that and really excited about it, and that's one of the things we try to do um, through Missouri Healthcare for All, and at 
uh, some of my colleagues at SLU, and that's uh, really great, but it's a process and it's a fight and we have to keep working for it. It'll be confusing for a while, but I, everything is improving. You know, we talk about the, the problems with the website and it was a disastrous launch, but it's gotten much better since then and people are getting on and successfully signing up for plans. There are kinds of other providers. You mentioned earlier on the show, the Kaiser Family Foundation has a wonderful website where you can go and see what plans are available. You know, things improve every single day. And I think come a month from now, the website will probably be an, an afterthought. I think we'll say, oh, it works now. It was such a disaster back then but now we've solved these issues and, and people will be able to, to sign up for care. I actually did the I went on Kaiser today to do the subsidy calculator it's and it's easy. really easy you put in your age you put in where you live and it tells you what's your average cost for a silver plan with a subsidy and I put it in just for an average person 27 years old $20,000 income and for a silver plan I would have paid that person about a thousand dollars a year. And so I got some information about that. So everybody can go do that now. They can go to Kaiser and find out what they're going to pay maybe on average. Every program has its growing pains. This is one of them, but I think it's really going to turn around soon. Okay, both of, two of you mentioned politics. Uh, Reverend, in your congregation, let's go back to what you were saying just a minute ago, is, uh, is Obamacare a dirty word in your congregation? <laughs> no. And is there, okay, so I think I, I, think I knew the answer to that before yeah. I asked it, but I want to know if there's a downside to that. Is, is, is there anything uh, that, what comes to your mind there? Well, I think that the uh, downside, if we can call it a downside, is um, the lack of, of access. Um, at my church, we're in the process of trying to uh, connect with different brokers who uh, can bring uh, different insurance plans to the table. So beside people going to the website, uh, getting people signed up. Because there are some people who don't have access to the internet. They don't have computers. And so that then becomes a barrier. Um, uh, particularly young people, they're not using the telephone. Mm -hmm. They either go into the computer, but if they don't have access, we gotta try to uh, help to deal with those barriers. So. In that particular vein, I think that it's very important for us to continue to keep going back. It's, it's a repeat. Uh, but it's very important also for young people who are healthy and the uninsured to get on board uh, because this is an equal opportunity issue. And of course, we know that at some point you're going to need health care. And anything that's worth having is not going to be easy to get. But this is just the trial by error that we're going through. And eventually, we're going to get there. So, so it sounds like you're saying there might be a different message for different people. Yes. And, and, and does that ring true with you guys from yeah. what you see in your work? When we go out and uh, we give talks, we think about who our audience is and maybe what they need to know. If we have an older audience who maybe has some more people who are Medicare eligible, we try to tell them how this is not going to really affect them. There are a few things that do affect them, but not really. But if we're talking to a younger audience or people with kids, you know, we have to think about what those messages look like and what information they need, because not every group needs the same information. And that's really important to understand yeah. as well. I think it's very important to distance it from the politics. You know, I think I see many patients who claim that they hate Obamacare, that it's terrible. But you ask them, well, what part of it's bad? And they, they will tell you the parts that they've benefited from. And they'll say, well, you know, I have a kid that's living at home. And well, they're 25 and they got to stay on my insurance. And I really like that. But but no, I, I hate <laughs> Obamacare. It's, it's a terrible policy. And I think it, it, there's a danger in, in really conflating politics with what the legislation actually does. Reverend, you said it's a social justice issue for you. Are you optimistic about the social justice of health care? Yes, I am. Um, I'm very optimistic because, uh, first of all, because of my faith, and second of all, because of the country in which we live and with us trying to make this major paradigm shift that's not going to benefit a particular core, but it's going to benefit all, um, and the sacrifice for those persons who may have to pay a little bit more extra um, outweighs the bit outweighs the cost for those that are paying extra to be a blessing to those who will benefit from this plan. Reverend Alex, Nick, thank you all for your time very much. And again,